2023 AD, the tenth year of the eschatological world. Zwitienchen remained the sole survivor after living countless years in a mutated zombie world. But somehow, he reached his end. He bid farewell to his wife. He was surrounded by zombies. Right when he was about to die, he got unconscious. Somebody is calling Zwa, was he not infected with the zombie virus? Zwitienchen slowly opened his eyes he was getting scolded for sleeping in class. He stands up fully shocked realizing that he was in his old classroom. His classmates were laughing at him and taunting him. His teacher punishes him by standing for the whole class. But Zwa was still in dilemma as to what happened and how he was still alive. He goes to the washroom, unbelievable, he was back in high school, in a peaceful world without an apocalyptic crisis and the infected. The scar on his face had also disappeared, also his face had also become very unfamiliar. Zwa suddenly gets a strange vibe, his reflexes quickly came into play, he broke the mirror and used the broker piece to attack, but he stops. It was his high school friend Gao Fei. Gao gets the bandages from the infirmary and bandages Zwa asking Zwa what was going with him and if he needs to go to the hospital. At first Zwa could not remember him, but he soon remembers Gao Fei as his best friend in school days. But after the eschatological era began, he died. Gao reminds Zwa that he was going to bid farewell to the single state before Valentine's Day. Zwa stands up in hearing that today was the Valentine's Day. Zwa suddenly remembers that in Valentine's Day, 10 years ago, on the very day he is in. He summoned up courage to express his love to the school beauty but ended up being mocked publicly. But this was not the reason that he remembered this day. It was because the eschatological era had begun at around 2 p.m. that day. It is currently 12.20 at noon, Gao is telling Zwa to give up as many people are chasing after the school beauty and he should give up. Suddenly, the girl arrives from the back and mocks Zwa for giving her a love letter. Zwa told Duan Churu, the school beauty, that he was also disgusted to see her. He could not believe that he had liked her. Her selfishness had caused a lot of death in his past life including Gao Fei. Gao Fei praises Chen for telling that. At 2 p.m., February 14, 2018, a meteorite crashed into the Earth's atmosphere. It exploded into countless pieces, which fell around the world with its virus spreading in a flash. At the beginning, people infected by the virus were all in coma. A minority of them resisted the virus and regained consciousness. But over 70% of humans became monsters. Survivors fought back bravely, and some of them gained supernatural powers by evolution. But the infected evolved as well. At last hour the homeland had become hell. It is 12.50 p.m. February 14, less than an hour was left for the apocalypse to begin. Gao Fei was confused and asked Zua if he was writing a novel of sorts. He had just said that the school beauty was disgusting to her face and was blabbering about a doomsday. Zua tells him to forget about it and to buy as much food as possible with the money he has left. He doesn't buy something with high calorie, like chocolate chip biscuits and canned food. Zua density cannot explain so he will just lie to him. Zwa runs away telling him that he needs to buy medicine for his parents and some daily necessaries so he tells him to meet at the school run factory later. His parents had long passed away in a car accident but he hopes that Gao listens to him and gets all of the necessaries. Changji boarding school was located by a lake in the north suburbs of the city and perfectly dodged corpse crowds in the downtown. During the last eschatological era, although there were heavy casualties in the school it was still much better than the outside world. This body of Zwa was very weak, he had only ran for a while but he was way too tired. He had reached the school, as a boarding school there were a lot more tools needed for survival. And the school's bankrupt factory had a great weapon as well. He ties a cloth around the crowbar to make it easier to grip, which would be way easier to use than axes and knives, the early infected had very sluggish moment and keeping distance with them would be fine for now and the abandoned pace was a great shelter. Zwa had to do better this time and meet up with her. There were someone coming. It was the school sports team. They had followed him to take revenge on what happened earlier with Duan Churu. One of them comes forward to hit Zwa but Zwa had almost hit him with a murderous intent. He ordered all of them to hit lost. It was 1355, the team were returning vowing to take revenge on Zwa whenever they get the chance. Duan mocks them for losing to Zwa. Zwa had caused the person to go all sweaty, he was scared, his instinct had told him to stop or else Zwa was going to kill him. Suddenly, they see something in the sky. They were like shooting starts. 
Everyone was looking up at it. These people had no idea what was going to happen next. It could be seen from all over the world. People were taking pictures. Zwa was also looking at that. A lot of people had though that it was a God's gift for the Valentine's Day. Suddenly an earthquake. Zwa realized that it had begun, everyone had fallen unconscious for up to 20 hours that to the virus that spontaneously spread through the air. And when they all woke up the world had become hell. There was someone there, Xian? Zombie? Zwa suddenly woke up, it was just a dream. Gao is confused why they fell asleep. It was already 10 in the morning Gao was scared that he would be punished for not going to the class in time. Zwa tells him not to worry. Gao points out that Zwa had been acting weird since yesterday. Zwa notices something approaching by Goa had no idea what was coming. A person enters the shed. Gao thinks that he must be the teacher on duty and tries to approach him. But Zwa quickly jumps and hit him with a crowbar. Gao is scared of the situation. There was no need to kill even if he was scared of punishment. But Zwa tells him not to show hesitation while meeting a zombie. He tells Gao to grab the backpack and follow him as he is about to see that the world had already changed. The scene outside was horrible. There was a lot of chaos, the people had turned into a zombie. Gao is confused, thinks that he is dreaming. Zombies see them and come toward them but Zwa manages to kill them all. There were someone in a distance, it was Duan and the person from earlier. They were running from the zombie, Zwa tells that they should look after themselves first. Duan trips and falls. She asks for help in despair. Zwa then quickly cuts the head off the zombie. Duan realizes that it is Zwa, they then move forward. They get into the classroom and then lock the door. Gao asks that they should do now. Zwa's body was way too weak, he needed to build up his physique. Duan was crying out loud, so Zwa tells her to shut up. The guy becomes angry because of that and comes towards Zwa. Zwa sees that he is hurt. He tells them that he got bit by one of the zombies earlier. Zwa explains that the early infections were by the virus that Soriad through the 8 and the second wave were the ones that got bitten by the virus. But there is only 70% chance of getting it through the air. But if they come in contact, like get bitten by the infected, they will become zombie too. The guy thinks that it was all rubbish. Zhu oaks if he should kill him cause at least he can die as a human, but the guy does not agrees until his body really starts turning into a zombie. He gets scared and goes toward Duan, but she rejects him and tells them to get out. Gao realizes that she was so quick to betray him even though he got injured from protecting her. A car crashes on the school building, it was the principal's car. It was a good chance most of the infected had gone there. Zwa tells the guy that he going to be a zombie soon, but he denies to accept that. Zwa tells Gao that they should go now, Duan tries to follow them, but the guy hold him, this makes Duan furious, she grabs her knife and cuts him. Zwa realizes that the infected had not evolved yet. Gao is hesitating to cut the zombies. Zwa tells him that he can kill them by destroying their heads. Gao then musters up the courage to kill a zombie. Suddenly, Duan comes calling Gao and Zwa. Zhu asks why she had followed them. Duan asks them to bring her along too. Goa insisted to help her. So, Zwa tells that they don't have time to deal with her so she can come along, but she needs to listen to Zwa's instructions. This makes Duan mad, but she had no other choice than T follow them. The zombies were all around the school gate. Zwa tells them that it is dangerous for them to jump up the bridge, so he is going to upstairs to the broadcasting room and when the time is right, those monsters will go toward the loudspeaker and that is going to be their escape. Gao asks then what about Zwa, he tells that he is going to be fine and not to worry about him. Gao sees Duan Churu, and asks if she is alright. Duan is planning to toy Zwa to death in return of speaking to her like that. She thanks Gao to let her tag along and tries seducing him. She though that a virgin boy like him would be easy to deal with. She tries to speak against Zwa. Gao tells that he is a great guy, but he is not a sucker so she should not badmouth Zwa behind his back while he is risking his life for them. Zwa distracts the zombie to get into the broad case room while he was figuring out the system a zombie comes in. It was a very strong zombie, it was a half-evolved zombie, he cannot let himself be bitten as he did not have any resistance to the virus yet. He sees a knitting equipment at side and then quickly uses it to kill the zombie. He takes heavy breaths in relief. He had never thought that there would be a zombie in the broadcast room. It was a close call, thank god it was only a half-evolved zombie. He sees a picture in the room and guesses that she was the infected. She seemed like the main broadcaster with a gentle voice. 
While the virus spread she must have been knitting, what a pity it was. The sound starts coming from the mic. The zombies all get attracted to the pole. Gao and Duan take the chance and quickly get to the gate and break the lock. He waits at the door for Zhu Tianchen, but Duan tries to run away from there. A bus arrives the person asks both of them to get in. Duan tries calling Gao he wants to wait for Zhu. Duan tries to blame Zhu for the murdering someone. With a smirk face she tells that she should close the door and rush out. Duan tries to make Gao leave Zhu alone and run away. Gao is furious on Duan as she was a backstabber. He stands on the gate telling that those who want to close the gate should be ready to get cut too. The people in the bus are confused to what is happening outside. They all get in the bus and leaving Gao alone. There was someone behind him. He suddenly gets pulled back. Gao was getting pushed to his limits, he would not hold the zombie any longer, he did not want to die there. Suddenly the head of the zombie gets chopped off. Zhu had returned. Gao tells Zhu about the bus but he explains that getting on the bus would not have been bad but if there were any infected inside then it would have been a lot more dangerous. Gao was very angry at Duan. Zhu was very happy that Gao did not get on that bus because in his last life. There was a student who had been hiding his injuries, he had suddenly changed into a zombie which caused the bus to crash. The crash attracted more zombies and all of them were desperate to escape. All the students hid inside a shutter leaving Zhu and Gao out by Duan. Gao's leg had been injured, he could not run, so he tells Zhu to leave him and run away. The weak Zhu could do nothing but run that day but this time was different and was given a chance to redo everything so he would live his life without regrets. Do check out our other series. There will be new content every week. Hope you like the video. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification on to never miss future updates and share it with your friends who might like it. Thank you for watching. We witness Tian Shan and Gao Fei arriving at a garage, which happens to belong to one of Gao Fei's relatives. Gao Fei proudly shares that he was given the keys to the garage. As they enter, Tian Shan instructs Gao Fei to firmly close the door and then inspect the interior. Meanwhile, Gao Fei is engrossed in his phone, prompting Tian Shen to inquire about his plans. Gao Fei expresses his desire to head home and see his parents as soon as possible, as his phone lacks a connection. However, Tian Shen reveals that he also plans to go to Ji County to find someone and that his family is also there. Gao Fei is surprised by Tian Shen's words and playfully teases him, suggesting that he must be searching for a girl. Tian Shen dismisses the remark and labels Gao Fei as an optimistic person. Night falls, and multiple zombies start banging on the garage door. Gao Fei becomes afraid, but Tian Chen assures him that the zombies won't be able to break in. Tian Chen takes the opportunity to teach Gao Fei something important. He explains that both of them have been infected by the same virus that turned others into monsters. Tian Chen reveals that the virus triggers sudden mutations, causing most people to transform into monsters whose bodies crumble. However, a small number of individuals can resist these mutations and even control them. By controlling their body's evolution, they can enhance their resistance to the virus. Gao Fei asks how Tianchen acquired such knowledge, but Tianchen urges him not to worry and to follow his lead. Tianchen teaches Gao Fei a breathing method that speeds up their evolution. He emphasizes the need to develop resistance to the virus first. Tianchen sits down and demonstrates the breathing method, resulting in his body emitting a red glow. He instructs Gao Fei to focus calmly on every inch of his body, following the rhythm Tian Chen has shown him. If Gao Fei feels a sting while doing it, Tian Chen explains that it signifies the presence of the virus hidden within their bodies, which they must learn to control. Tian Chen further explains that the virus will gradually accumulate in specific areas of their bodies, determining their evolutionary path. Upon completing the breathing method, Tian Chen realizes that his evolutionary path remains the same as before. His palms have evolved, making him a palm line evolutionary. This form of evolution is considered universal, where abilities increase evenly, resulting in an average performance in every aspect. Tian Chen remarks that it may be seen as rubbish, but it's not entirely bad either. He shares that he discovered the breathing method to increase evolutionary speed before dying and that he went to great lengths to acquire it in his previous life. Having it early this time gives him an absolute advantage due to his knowledge and experience from the next decade. We witness Tian Chen running desperately, tightly holding the hand of a girl. The girl stumbles, and a horde of zombies relentlessly chase after them. Concerned, Tian Chen asks if she's alright, but she confesses that she has sprained her leg. 
Despite the approaching zombies, Tianchen hesitates for a moment but decides to carry the girl on his back. She pleads with him to leave her behind and focus on saving himself, but Tianchen resolutely declares that he will ensure her survival. They continue their frantic escape from the pursuing zombies, only to discover that the bridge ahead is in ruins. The zombies draw nearer, and the girl insists that Tianchen put her down and escape alone. However, Tianchen adamantly refuses, vowing to save her no matter what. He instructs her to hold on tight as he leaps from one side of the broken bridge to the other. Unfortunately, upon landing on the other side, the girl slips off Tianchen's back. In a desperate attempt, Tianchen reaches out his hand, but he fails to grasp her, and she plummets into the abyss below. Tianchen abruptly awakens from his dream, realizing that what he saw was a haunting memory from the past. The following morning, we find Tianchen preparing his bag while Gao Fei inquires about his intentions. Tianchen asserts that the person he is searching for holds immense significance to him, which is why he must find her. Gao Fei urges him to bring the girl back swiftly, but Tianchen assures him that he doesn't need to remind him of that. Gao Fei comments that he doesn't see any zombies outside, but Tianchen cautions him to remain vigilant and ensure that no one enters. Gao Fei asserts that he's not a child and urges Tianchen to return soon. As Tianchen rides his bike outside, we discover that the person he is desperately searching for is his beloved from his previous life, Xian. She holds the utmost significance in Tianchen's life, but he believes that in this current existence, they are still strangers who have yet to cross paths. Tianchen finds himself standing by a road, admitting that he doesn't recall the roots from 10 years ago. Suddenly, a group of zombies launches an attack on him. However, Tianchen swiftly dispatches them with a single powerful swing of his crowbar, sending them straight to hell. Amidst the chaos, Tianchen hears a distant scream. He spots a frightened little girl and a woman trapped in a car, surrounded by encroaching zombies. Seizing the opportunity, Tianchen sneaks up behind one of the zombies, grabs it, and hurls it aside. He follows up by delivering a swift kick to another zombie, causing it to collide with a third, sending both undead creatures flying. We witness Tianchen forcefully slamming one of the zombies to the ground, showcasing his incredible prowess. Inside the car, the child is in awe of Tianchen's remarkable abilities. Tianchen reflects on how his strength and reaction time have increased just as he anticipated. Evolving at a faster rate than everyone else has made him incredibly overpowered in the early stages, even as one of the universal types. Catching his breath after the fight, Tianchen beckons the remaining zombie to come at him, swiftly disposing of it as well. As he pants heavily, the woman expresses her gratitude for his assistance. However, Tianchen urges them to find a safe place and leave immediately before thanking him. Tianchen directs them to a nearby convenience store, suggesting it as a hiding spot. He advises them to go ahead while he follows later. Retrieving a can of fuel, Tianchen pours it onto the car. He notices that his overall abilities are gradually manifesting, with the lines on his palms becoming more defined. The little girl turns to her sister, expressing concern about Tian Chen's safety outside. Her sister admits that she doesn't know, and instructs her to stay inside the store while she goes to check on him. However, the determined little girl insists on accompanying her sister. Relenting, her sister agrees but cautions her to stick close and not wander off as the zombies approach him, he ignites a cigarette and tosses it onto the fuel-soaked ground, causing the car to explode and eliminating all the zombies in one fell swoop. The woman is astonished by Tianchen's actions, questioning who he might be. They all return to the store, where Tianchen asks the little girl if the woman is her mother. To his surprise, she reveals that the woman is actually her sister. Tianchen gives her teddy bear back to her which brings a smile to her face. While Tianchen drinks some water, the little girl curiously asks if he thinks her sister is pretty. Tianchen admits that he does, but questions why she's asking. Suddenly, he's taken aback and chokes on his water when the little girl reveals her desire for him to be her brother-in-law, mentioning that her sister doesn't currently have a boyfriend. Tianchen responds by advising her that children shouldn't speak such nonsense. The woman raises her concerns to Tianchen, expressing that they shouldn't simply take and consume items from the store as it could be considered stealing. In response, Tianchen suggests that she return the items since someone else would have taken them anyway. The woman explains how society changed in a blink of an eye, recounting that she was teaching at an all-girls middle school just the day before. This revelation surprises Tianchen, causing him to grab her shoulders and urgently inquire if it was Xingxing Middle School. Confused, she confirms that it is indeed the same school. Tianchen proceeds to ask if she knows a student named Su Ruoxin. 
Before answering, she requests that he release his grip on her. Apologizing, Tianchen explains that he is a friend of Su Rua Xian and wishes to find her at the school. The woman shares that Xian Xian might still be at the school, as she left early yesterday, although classes were still held as usual. She reassures Tianchen not to worry, emphasizing that Su Rua Xian is an intelligent individual. Following their conversation, the woman ponders whether Tianchen's intentions go beyond friendship, considering the risks he is willing to face for Su Rua Xian. Grateful for his efforts, she kisses Tianchen on the cheek, causing him to blush. She clarifies that it is both a thank you and a farewell kiss, urging him to continue on his own path. Meanwhile, the little girl becomes upset, refusing to part ways and insisting on following Tianchen. Her sister reminds her to behave and explains that Tianchen has his own mission to attend to, assuring her that they will reunite someday. Tianchen inquires if the kid knows how to drive, to which she affirms. Encouraging them, Tianchen declares that they will go together. We witness the little girl riding the bike with Tianchen, while the woman sits behind. Reflecting on the terrifying state of the world, she expresses her fear. Tian Shen compares the situation to a virus, like those depicted in horror movies. Curious about their destination, she questions where they are heading. Tian Shen leads them to a car, revealing his expertise in opening such vehicles. Startled, the woman questions how he knows to steal a car and suggests going to a police station to find Xian Xian. In response, Tian Shen points to a zombie police officer and asks if that is what she means. Shocked by the sight, she discloses that her surname is Luo. Tian Shen informs her that the world has already transformed into something unimaginable, as he swiftly dispatches the zombie. We witness Tian Shen collecting the equipment from the defeated zombies, including tactical clothing and stab gloves, to protect himself from common infections. He hands Luo a baton and advises her to be cautious and trust no one if she wants to survive, emphasizing the importance of self-reliance. Tian Shen instructs her to go and find his friend, introducing himself as Luo Xiaoyu and her sister as Luo Xiaoxue. They bid each other to stay safe, with Xiaoxue teasing Xiaoyu that if he finds his love, she won't have a chance. Xiaoyu acknowledges this and playfully calls both her sister and Tianchen annoying. As Tianchen drives, he encounters a traffic jam and continues on foot. Spotting a police car, he suspects there might be a gun inside. Approaching the vehicle, he peers through the window and indeed finds a gun, but suddenly a zombie from inside lunges at him, shattering the window. Reacting swiftly, Tianchen punches and eliminates the zombie, but his actions attract more undead from the surroundings. He dispatches another zombie with his knife and retrieves the gun. Inside the school, three students notice Tianchen's presence, alerting each other. One suggests he may have slain a monster, while another girl spots zombies approaching him. Tianchen assesses his weapons, a pair of silenced guns with 35 rounds, and remarks that it might not be enough. The girls observe Tianchen surrounded by zombies, doubting his survival chances. One girl speculates that he climbed the bus to gain an advantage, while the other believes he sought higher ground to evade the siege. A zombie attempts to climb onto the bus, but Tian Chen swiftly eliminates it. Defiantly, Tian Chen taunts the zombies to attack him, leaving the girls watching with hope for his survival. Despite one girl's skepticism, Tian Chen engages in a prolonged battle, successfully eliminating multiple zombies. After a grueling fight, Tianchen manages to kill all the zombies, except for one charging at him. Tianchen blocks the zombie's attack with a crowbar making the zombie bite the crowbar, he pushes him away, and shoots him, ending the threat. Exhausted, Tianchen collapses on the roof of the bus. One of the girls informs someone named Sha Luo Lansha that the zombie attack has ceased. Lansha, shocked, inquires about the situation, but due to the darkness, she can only see one person, Tianchen, sitting on the bus, deeply focused. Tianchen concentrates and undergoes further evolution using the breathing method, harnessing and controlling Abola's metamorphic cells within a specific area. Patterns begin to appear on Tianchen's arm as he rises. Tianchen realizes that his weapon feels lighter, but acknowledges that the most crucial aspect is his ability to resist the virus. He notes how he can now perceive events within a 5-meter radius, entering a heightened state of awareness. Sensing something from the school, he declares that he is coming for Xian Xian. We find Tian Chen deep in concentration, believing that with his enhanced strength, he should be able to sense the presence of zombies. To gather the zombies in one place, Tian Chen throws a bottle, luring them in, and then swiftly eliminates two of them by jumping off a wall. Skillfully wielding his knives, he beheads three more zombies, leaving only one remaining. Inside the classroom, the three students have run out of food. 
one of them suggests going to the teacher's room, as there are no monsters in the gallery. However, others are hesitant, citing the dangers of venturing out at night. One girl argues that without food, they won't have energy and will be even more vulnerable. Eventually, they all agree to head to the teacher's room, taking a flashlight with them. One of the girls, Lua Lansha, is asked to go to class 2, while another goes to class 3. Lua Lansha, as she searches through the bags and books she finds a bottle of water when suddenly she hears a giant scream we see Tianchen has entered the school building and senses that someone is in the building in a state of panic, Lua Lansha fears that her friends might have encountered an accident. As she glances out of the window, her worst fears come true, she witnesses her friend being relentlessly chased by a ravenous zombie. Fueled by concern, Luo Lansha rushes out of the room in search of her friend, only to stumble upon a horrifying scene. Her friend's neck is viciously torn by a bloodthirsty zombie, and another friend lies lifeless on the ground. Overwhelmed by fear, Luo Lansha is petrified as the zombie abruptly shifts its attention away from her. However, this respite is short-lived, as the relentless creature resumes its pursuit, relentlessly chasing after Luo Lansha. Tianchen cautiously enters a room teeming with zombies, finding himself completely surrounded by the grotesque creatures. With lightning speed, he draws both of his guns and unleashes a storm of bullets, mercilessly eliminating every single zombie in his path. Amidst the chaos, his keen eyes catch sight of one particular zombie that is displaying signs of evolution, a transformation that would typically take two full days to complete. Aware of his dwindling ammunition, Tianchen quickly assesses his remaining bullet count, discovering that he now possesses a mere 25 rounds. However, his attention is diverted as he notices a group of zombies relentlessly attacking a classroom door. Intrigued by the possibility of someone seeking refuge inside, Tian Chen relies on his heightened senses and sharp instincts. He intently listens and discerns the faint voice of a girl emanating from within the classroom, leading him to deduce that she must be hiding there. As Tianchen clears the room of the last lingering zombies, the girl, still concealed in a corner, catches sight of him. Filled with relief and hope, she approaches him, her eyes brimming with gratitude. But before pleasantries are exchanged, the girl's hunger becomes apparent, and she anxiously inquires if Tianchen has any food to spare. As Tianchen observed the girl devouring her food, he decided to strike up a conversation. He asked her if she knew who Su was, to which she confidently replied, of course I do. Su is the most beautiful girl in our school. Lan Cha, curious about the conversation, chimed in and asked Tian Chen if he was going to eat as well. However, Tian Chen assured her that he was fine and not hungry. Engaging further, the girl revealed an intriguing piece of information. She mentioned that during the chaotic period at school, many people managed to escape, and it's possible that Su might have escaped too. As she leaned down to rummage through her bag, Tian Chen's eyes widened in surprise. His curiosity peaked, and he couldn't help but ask where she had obtained the necklace she was wearing the girl replied that it belonged to her. Tian Chen inquired if the girl was Luo Hang's daughter. Perplexed, she asked how he knew her dad. Tian Chen explained that he and her father were friends. Though initially confused, the girl listened as Tian Chen suggested that she come with him so he could take her to her dad. With a hungry gaze, she agreed to follow him, emphasizing the importance of having food and warning Tian Chen not to perish along the way. Tianchen nodded in agreement. A glimpse into Tianchen's past life unfolded before us. He recalled a memory with a man by his side. In the memory, Tianchen complained about not getting what he wanted, but the man, Luo, instructed him to get in the car, mentioning a return to the camp. Tianchen noticed something amiss within a building and pointed out that whoever was inside was formidable and would pose a tough challenge. Luo concurred, sharing the same concern. Suddenly, a monstrous creature resembling a green root emerged from the building, terrifying Tianchen. But Luo fearlessly stepped forward, proclaiming his responsibility to vanquish the beast. He drew his weapon and swiftly attacked the monster, striking it repeatedly as the creature bellowed in agony. However, the monster retaliated, striking Luo and knocking him back. In that critical moment, Tianchen sprang into action, firing bullets at the monster. The distraction allowed Tianchen to momentarily thwart the creature's advance. However, he soon ran out of ammunition, leaving him defenseless against the approaching menace. At the brink of the monster's attack, we witnessed Luo sever the creature's limbs and dismantle it into pieces. The monster perished, leaving both Luo and Tianchen exhausted from the battle. Tianchen marveled at Luo's impressive speed, and as Luo removed his shirt, a wing-like pattern on his back caught their attention. Returning to the camp, they found solace in each other's company. While Luo examined the necklace, 
Tianchen inquired about its significance. Luo revealed that his daughter, Luo Lansha, also possessed an identical necklace. Tianchen expressed his surprise, unaware of Luo's paternal status. Tearfully, Luo shared how his daughter, if still alive, would be 18 years old. He lamented his decision to leave her side and join the brigade for a mission, believing that had he stayed, she would have been safe. Tianchen consoled Luo, assuring him that his daughter would be fine because she inherited her father's strength and resilience. The scene shifted back to the present, where Tianchen was teaching Luo Lansha the breathing method for evolution. Impressed with her progress, Tianchen praised her and announced they would continue their training the following day. Observing the gathering virus cells within Luo Lansha, Tianchen mused that even though she was the first to master the breathing technique, it had only taken her three attempts. He saw it as a sign that he had successfully passed on the method to Luo's daughter. In another room of the school, a zombie glowed with a vivid red hue as it underwent a further evolution, revealing a monstrous form. Tianchen handed a gun to Luo Lansha and asked if she knew how to use it. Lansha assured him that she did, thanks to her father's teachings. Tianchen then advised her to keep the safety on, to which Lansha inquired if it was to be prepared for any unforeseen threats. Impressed by her astuteness, Tianchen acknowledged her quick adaptation to the environment. Lan Sha attributed it to witnessing the tragic demise of numerous individuals. In response, Tianchen encouraged her to remain in the classroom and practice, assuring her that she would be safe as long as she stayed quiet. Curiosity stirred within Lan Sha, prompting her to inquire about Tianchen's journey of fighting and defeating zombies in order to learn the breathing technique. Taken aback by her awareness, Tianchen asked if she had witnessed his battles. Lan Sha confirmed, expressing her astonishment and desire to become as strong as him. Encouraging her ambition, Tianchen advised her to dedicate herself to practice. He then sought information from Lan Sha, asking about the location of the PA room. She informed him that it resided in the basement, situated behind the storage room. Lan Sha cautioned him about the darkness that shrouded the area and suggested bringing a torch. Grateful for her guidance, Tianchen resolved to eliminate all the infected creatures surrounding him. He contemplated the idea of making an announcement over the PA system to ensure there were no other survivors within the school. However, a lingering feeling of unease made him question the situation. To navigate the infected infested corridors efficiently, he retrieved a rope he had discovered inside a police car. Tossing it out of the window, he began descending, aware that he couldn't afford to waste time dealing with the numerous infected creatures in the hallways. As he descended, a sense of unease intensified within Tianchen, raising the possibility that the infected beings might have started to mutate. Nonetheless, he remained determined to reach his destination. Counting to ten, Tianchen activated his perception mode, but to his surprise, he failed to detect any signs of infected creatures. This made him ponder if he had been mistaken in his initial assessment. We witnessed Tianchen advancing through the basement, vigilantly pointing his gun ahead. Aware of the vastness of the area, he acknowledges the possibility of flaws in his detection abilities, determined not to let his guard down. Unbeknownst to him, a menacing monster stealthily follows his every move. As Tianchen reaches the electrical room, his attention is caught by a zombie, which he promptly dispatches with a single shot to the head. However, in his momentary distraction, the lurking monster seizes the opportunity to launch an attack from behind. Reacting swiftly, Tianchen turns to face the monstrous creature, identifying it as a second-level infected. With a deft maneuver, he evades the attack by leaping into the air, recognizing the accelerated evolution of the zombies and remarking on the incredible hardness of their bones, particularly their skulls. Wishing he had a more powerful firearm, Tianchen delivers a forceful blow to the monster's head, only to find that not even a scratch is left upon its resilient skull. Realizing the need to prioritize his escape, Tianchen swiftly takes off, sprinting up the stairs. Roaring in pursuit, the relentless monster remains hot on his heels. In the classroom, Lan Sha hears the piercing screams of the monster, which in turn attracts other nearby zombies. Sensing the danger escalating, Tianchen charges back toward the monster, determined to neutralize it before it can summon additional undead reinforcements. Striking the monster's head with all his might, Tianchen unleashes a flurry of rapid attacks, urging the creature to meet its demise. Despite the relentless assault, the monster attempts to rise once more, prompting Tianchen to unleash a relentless barrage of strikes, determined to ensure its final defeat. As the other zombies converge upon the basement, distracting Tianchen, the relentless monster rises once again, aiming a powerful punch at him. Reacting swiftly, Tianchen evades the attack by swiftly moving behind, eluding the monster's grasp. 
Seizing the opportunity, he quickly distances himself from the creature. In the midst of the chaos, the monster, accompanied by four additional zombies, searches for Tianchen while he observes their movements, deducing their numbers and noting that the monster hasn't fully completed its evolution. Tianchen recalls that a typical second-level infected has the ability to call for help from ten other infected. Taking decisive action, Tianchen kicks down a nearby door, initiating a fierce battle with the zombie and the monster. He skillfully shoots the monster in the head, momentarily incapacitating it, and wields his trusty crowbar to eliminate the remaining zombies. Realizing that the handgun bullets alone cannot eliminate the monster, Tianchen believes they will at least slow it down. Rushing towards the zombie with his crowbar, he delivers a powerful strike to its head, targeting the same spot where the bullet had impacted. Reflecting on the situation, Tianchen remarks on the second-level infected's ability to launch sneak attacks and summon reinforcements, noting their exceptional durability in one-on-one -on -one encounters. Glancing out the window, Tianchen recognizes that it may be time to descend once more to restore the electricity. To his surprise, he discovers that the monster's presence has drawn all the zombies in the school to the first floor. Spotting a medical room nearby, Tianchen locates a bottle of medical alcohol and hurls it out the window, effectively dousing the ground with the flammable liquid. With a well-timed strike of a lit alcohol bottle, he sets the spilled alcohol ablaze, igniting the gathered zombies. Lan Chao watches in amazement as the zombies become engulfed in flames. Meanwhile, she notices that the electricity has been restored, indicating Tian Chen's success in his mission. We witness Tian Chen entering the PA room, making a heartfelt announcement to Su Ruo Xian. He implores her, if she is still in the school, to meet him at the school gate the following day, assuring her that he will be waiting there. He acknowledges that it may seem strange to her since they are strangers, but hopes that she believes him. Returning to Lan Sha, Lan Sha tells him that she heard the public announcement he just made. With a mischievous smirk, Lan Sha teasingly remarks that she now understands that he carries a torch for Xian. She playfully imagines Tianchen witnessing Xian walking out of the school, experiencing love at first sight, and becoming infatuated with her. Tianchen responds by lightly hitting Lan Sha on the head, urging her to stop speaking nonsense, and instructing her to go and rest. As morning arrives, Tianchen and Lan Sha awaken to the sight of two individuals outside. Hopeful that one of them is Xian, Tianchen rushes outside, eagerly approaching the girls, anticipating a long-awaited reunion. However, his excitement quickly turns to shock as he realizes that they are not Xian. Nevertheless, he asks if they have any information about Xian's whereabouts. Regrettably, they express their lack of knowledge. Lan Sha speculates that they may be seeking help instead. The two girls attempt to seduce Tianchen, but he firmly tells them to let go of him. Lancha's hamster, sensing danger, emits a warning sound toward one of the girls. Tianchen questions the girl if she has been bitten, prompting the other girl to ask why she didn't disclose her condition. Despite the girl's insistence that it was just a scratch, Tianchen knows that within approximately 20 minutes, the infection will take hold, turning her into a zombie. Desperately, she tries to assure Tianchen that it won't be a problem. However, her companion forcefully pushes her to the ground, claiming that she is uninfected and suggesting they leave her behind. Angered by the betrayal, the fallen girl refers to her friend as an ingrate, recalling the share of water she had given her. In response, her friend shoves her away, deeming her a monster. Consumed by anger, the fallen girl lunges at her friend, biting her shoulder. Screaming in horror, the friend pleads for release, but the infected girl vows to take her down with her, refusing to face death alone. Understanding the gravity of the situation, Tianchen informs the infected girl that since her friend has already begun the transformation, she is now possibly infected as well. Defiantly, she sits on the ground, asserting that she won't die. Her friend laughs menacingly. Tianchen and Lan Sha make the decision to leave both girls behind, realizing their survival is at stake. As they make their way to Tianchen's bike, they discover that it has disappeared, leaving them with no choice but to continue their journey on foot. Tianchen observed Shang Biao's body, his hamster, and speculated that it had evolved due to the virus. He admitted uncertainty since their knowledge of the virus was limited to experiential observations, and there were still many unknowns. Curious, Lan Sha questioned how Tianchen possessed such extensive knowledge about the virus, considering only four days had passed since the outbreak began. Tianchen proposed a revelation that he had come back in time. Lan Sha expressed her willingness to believe him, prompting Tianchen to advise her to keep a close watch on her hamster, as it might gain even greater power in the future. Suddenly, Tianchen heard gunshots ahead, though Lan Sha was unable to perceive them. 
Lan Cha mentioned the nearby police station as a potential safe haven. Tian Chen agreed, and they decided to investigate the police station. However, upon arrival, their hopes were shattered when they witnessed the police officers struggling against hordes of zombies. The officers fought valiantly, shooting at the oncoming undead. Hiding and observing the chaotic scene, Lan Cha was shocked by the grim reality before her. An officer named Old Lin informed his comrades that they couldn't hold out much longer due to dwindling ammunition. However, he urged them to persevere, as buying time for the citizens to escape was their priority. Another officer ordered a repositioning of the defensive line, leaving Lan Cha scared and disillusioned, realizing that their presumed place of safety was no longer secure. Tianchen reassured her, explaining that there was no longer any truly safe place in this world, and she needed to rely on herself. Tianchen decided they should head upstairs. Lan Cha asked if they shouldn't help the police officers, but Tianchen signaled her to stay quiet. Detecting the presence of four zombies in the room, he instructed Lan Cha to remain outside and stay vigilant. As the zombies noticed Tianchen, they charged towards him. Lan Cha's hamster, Shang Biao, cheered for Tianchen, but Lan Cha hushed him. We witnessed Tianchen engaging in combat with the zombies, wielding his trusty crowbar and striking the zombies' heads with his weapon. Just as Tianchen was about to eliminate one of the zombies, another zombie emerged from behind Lan Cha. Tianchen urgently warned her, telling her to look behind her. Lan Cha turned to find a zombie standing menacingly close. While Tianchen attempted to help, he was attacked by another zombie. With quick reflexes, he managed to break the neck of his assailant. Tianchen instructed Lan Cha to open fire on the zombie behind her. Initially hesitant, Lan Cha mustered the courage to shoot, blowing off half of the zombie's face. Despite feeling scared by the ordeal, Tianchen offered his hand to help Lan Cha up. Lan Cha apologized for spacing out during the fight, and Tianchen reminded her to stay aware of her surroundings. He congratulated her on successfully killing an infected for the first time. Tianchen suggested they observe the ongoing battle through a window. Lan Cha questioned why they weren't assisting the police, but Tianchen explained that the gunfire would attract zombies from several kilometers away, making it too dangerous to intervene. Lan Cha wondered why the police officers weren't moving either. Tianchen informed her that they would wait until the officers left and then seize their weapons for themselves. Tianchen informed Lan Cha that it was time for them to move, as the police officers appeared to have retreated. He instructed her to pack up their belongings. Lan Cha noticed a key and realized it matched the car parked outside. Tianchen agreed that they would try the key later and handed her the last magazine of bullets, instructing her to use it sparingly as they were running low. Lan Cha attempted to pick up a knife, but Tianchen stopped her and ends up getting hit, and Lan Cha says that she wouldn't be a burden. Curious, Lan Cha questioned why they hadn't encountered any other evolved infected individuals. Tianchen explained that only one out of a hundred infected individuals could evolve to the second stage. He emphasized that while the strength and speed of second stage zombies increased, it still remained within human capabilities. The true danger lay in their ability to learn to launch sneak attacks and call for assistance from other infected. Tianchen added that heavy firearms were still effective against them, but the more advanced stages of infection were unlikely to be encountered anytime soon. Lan Cha inquired about the time it took for zombies to evolve. Tianchen revealed that it typically took first stage infected individuals one week to a month to evolve into the second stage. He noted that the zombie they encountered in the basement was a special case and had not yet fully evolved. Observing the zombies following the police car, Tianchen concluded that the situation was safe. They tested the key they had found and confirmed that it worked for a nearby jeep. Opting for the jeep, they made their way to the police station. Tianchen cautioned Lan Sha that there might still be infection inside the building and advised her to stay close to him. Asserting her independence, Lan Sha replied that she was not a kid and didn't need to be told what to do. However, Tianchen insisted that she leave Shang Biu in the car and clear everything unnecessary from her backpack. Lan Sha bid farewell to her hamster, urging him to behave. Unbeknownst to them, someone watched their movements through binoculars and reported to their boss that the police had retreated, taking the zombies with them. The observer mentioned a male and female duo entering the police station, with the girl catching their attention. Plans were discussed to head to the police station to search for weapons and potentially capture the girl. They began making their way toward the police station, unaware of the imminent danger approaching. As Tianchen and Lan Cha step inside the police station, they are met with a grim scene lifeless bodies of both zombies and officers were strewn about. Tianchen deduces that the police had already cleared the area, 
prompting him to suggest they head towards the warehouse. Lan Cha proposes splitting up, a suggestion that Tian Chen agrees with. He proceeds to the second floor, reminding Lan Cha to stay vigilant. Utilizing his skills, Tian Chen senses no presence of the infected in the vicinity. He locates the warehouse and attempts to open the door, only to find it locked. Determined, he forcefully kicks the door open. Inside, he discovers an abundance of firearms, ammunition, and various weapons. Puzzled by the sight, Tian Chen wonders if all these supplies were merely police equipment that the officers had no time to retrieve. He considers it a stroke of luck, likening it to finding a gold mine. Eager to continue searching, he moves into another room. Meanwhile, Lan Sha stumbles upon police equipment such as a uniform, a bulletproof vest, a baton, and a helmet. Feeling disappointed by the lack of useful items, she hears a noise emanating from outside the room. Assuming it might be Tian Chen, she cautiously peeks out and instead spots unfamiliar individuals carrying weapons. Among the group, one person instructs his companions, referring to them as his second and third brothers, to head upstairs while he and the fourth brother check the area in front. Lan Sha, now concealed in a closet, grips a pistol tightly in her hand. From her vantage point, she overhears their conversation, indicating they are discussing her and Tian Chen. Lan Sha aims her gun at them, but her attempt at surprise fails as one of them opens the closet, exposing her presence. Tian Chen, busy filling his bag with supplies, begins to worry about finding Lan Sha, sensing that something is amiss. At the same time, the two brothers continue their patrol. Curious, one asks if the young boy they spotted with the bat will pose a challenge. The other brother reassures him, mentioning that their boss is a champion in mixed martial arts, making him unbeatable. When the first brother raises concerns about the other person having a gun, the second brother dismisses the worries, citing their numerical advantage. Swinging his bat confidently, he proposes sneaking up on the person and striking them from behind. His brother advises caution. In a swift and stealthy move, Tian Chen emerges from the shadows, incapacitating both brothers and rendering them unconscious. Yet, he suspects that more individuals might be present, raising concerns for Lancha's safety. Meanwhile, Lan Cha maintains her resolve, aiming her gun at the two brothers. One of them attempts to placate her, suggesting they simply want to talk. Dismissing their proposal, Lan Cha asserts that there is nothing to discuss and insists they leave. Unfazed, they propose scavenging together. As they attempt to approach her, she warns them to stay back, threatening to shoot. Lan Cha pulls the trigger, but the gun fails to discharge. Swiftly, the man grabs her hand, chiding her for not disengaging the safety first. Unfazed, Lan Cha places her hand on his, confidently declaring that her knees lack safety as she delivers a powerful kick to his groin. The man writhes in pain, while his friend checks on him. He orders his friend not to let Lan Cha escape. As Lan Cha attempts to flee, she is swiftly apprehended. The man, pointing a gun at her head, warns her not to make any sudden moves, threatening to shoot her. However, his attention is diverted to a dark corner where a familiar figure emerges, it's none other than Shang Biao, Lan Cha's hamster. The man shifts his focus to Shang Biao, allowing Lan Cha the opportunity to bite the man. Both Lan Cha and Shang Biao bite the man simultaneously, causing him to release his grip on Lan Cha. Seizing the chance to escape, Lan Cha sprints away. Shang Biao scurries towards Lan Cha, who continues to run while dodging the man's gunshots. As Lan Cha climbs up the stairs and falls hurting her leg, a hand reaches out towards her, surprising her. To her relief, she discovers Tian Chen standing before her. Concerned, Tian Chen inquires about Lan Cha's leg. She assures him that it doesn't hurt, but Tian Chen insists on carrying her, causing her cheeks to blush. Tian Chen carries Lan Cha up the stairs, swiftly realizing that they cannot waste time with their pursuers. The sound of gunshots has undoubtedly attracted the infected. As they reach the top, Tian Chen notices that two of the previous men have blocked their path, while another emerges from behind. The gang's boss confidently states that Tian Chen should put his gun down, emphasizing their numerical advantage of four against two. Tian Chen contemplates that he should have eliminated the two men earlier. Observing Lanch's fear, he realizes he has no other choice. To the boss's astonishment, Tian Chen's arms and legs display distinct patterns, a sign of his unique abilities. With determination, Tian Chen charges towards the two men in front. One of them fires a shot, but Tian Chen deftly evades the bullet. The man, bewildered by Tian Chen's agility, is swiftly struck in the face, sent flying through the air. Tian Chen then delivers a powerful punch to the other man, sending him tumbling down the stairs. Urging Lan Sha to join him, 
Tianchen warns her of the ongoing gunfire from their pursuers. Together, they swiftly make their way toward a window. Reaching the window, Tianchen instructs Lan Sha to jump out and hide in the car. Although Lan Sha is initially hesitant, Tianchen's assurance encourages her to take the leap. With a push, Lan Sha lands safely in a nearby garbage bin which makes her angry. Meanwhile, the remaining three men enter the room where Tianchen stands, ready to confront them. As they approach, Tianchen brandishes two knives, realizing he cannot sustain the enhanced abilities granted by the Abola virus for much longer. He must conclude the fight swiftly. Tianchen charges at the three men, skillfully evading the hail of bullets they unleash. He swiftly reaches them, severing the boss's arm, eliciting screams of agony. In the blink of an eye, Tianchen delivers a powerful kick to the boss's face, incapacitating him. The remaining two men attempt to aid their boss, but Tianchen deftly slices off their fingers. Holding both men by their necks, he firmly declares that he does not relish killing humans, but warns them that they have brought this upon themselves. After some contemplation, Tianchen decides to spare the remaining gang members, acknowledging that killing them would only soil his own hands. He asserts that he will allow nature to take its course. Meanwhile, the sound of gunshots has attracted a horde of zombies from the surrounding area, and they are converging upon the police station. Without hesitation, Tianchen leaps out of a window, landing on the ground below. He realizes that he can only fend off the zombies for a limited time, estimating that he has about one minute. Though fatigued from previous encounters, he knows he must act swiftly. Engaging in combat, he skillfully dispatches several zombies. However, the onslaught is relentless, and fatigue sets in rapidly. As the zombies draw nearer, Tianchen reflects on the harsh reality that misfortune always seems to come in pairs. Suddenly, a car comes barreling through, crashing into the zombies and sending them flying. To Tian Chen's surprise, Lan Sha is behind the wheel. Puzzled, he questions how she knows how to drive. Lan Sha explains that she had played around with it before, giving her some experience. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, Tian Chen instructs Lan Sha to quickly get them out of there before they become surrounded. With skill and determination, Lan Sha maneuvers the car, swiftly evading the encroaching zombies. The remaining gang members, witnessing their escape, vow to make their comeback. However, one of them grimly informs the boss that they are now completely surrounded by the relentless horde of zombies. We find Lan Sha waking up and calling out to Tianchen. She spots Tianchen doing push-ups outside and calls to him, but he requests a minute to finish his set of 1,000 push-ups. Tianchen, with a muscular build, complains about sweating as he gets up. Lan Sha asks if he was still human before, intrigued by his physique. Tianchen clarifies that it was just a set of push-ups and claims that if he hadn't forcefully stimulated his body, he could have easily done a thousand more. Lan Sha questions his recovery, to which Tianchen assures her that he is almost fully recovered and that there should be no danger around them. He adds that resting for two more days will ensure he's back to his best. Upon reaching their destination, Tianchen informs Lan Sha that there is a nearby gas station worth checking out. Lan Sha takes the wheel and drives towards the gas station. Upon arrival, Tianchen tells Lan Sha that there is someone inside noticing that the door has been barricaded with two steel bars, indicating the presence of someone alive inside. Lan Sha compliments Tianchen's sharp eyesight, and he instructs her to prepare the gun as they plan to enter. Using his heightened senses, Tianchen detects a presence inside but is uncertain if it's a living person or a zombie. Lan Sha questions whether it could be a zombie, but Tianchen assures her that he can handle the situation. He shatters the glass door and is taken aback by the sight of a person undergoing mutation. The mutated individual pleads for their help. Lan Sha expresses concern, and Tianchen admits that he has never witnessed such a phenomenon before. He asks the mutated man if he is injured, noticing his right hand. To Tianchen's astonishment, despite the extensive mutation, the man is still alive. However, his attention is drawn to something specific, surprising him. Equipping his knives, Tianchen instructs the man to endure the pain as he removes an object from his arm. The man groans in discomfort, but Tianchen successfully extracts the object a piece of the meteorite, confirming his suspicions. We see a perplexed Lan Sha asking about the piece of meteorite, and Tianchen, in turn, asks if she remembers the meteor shower they witnessed before. Lan Sha confirms her memory of the event and recalls how the zombies appeared afterward. Tianchen shows her the piece of meteorite, explaining that it originated from that very meteor shower. He reveals that the stone is the source of the Abola virus, but assures Lan Sha that as long as they don't touch it directly, they will be safe due to their immunity. 
Tianchen mentions that they will discover its purpose later on. Lansha inquires about the fate of the mutated man, and Tianchen reveals that the man has already passed away. He considers it a miracle that the man clung to life for so long. Suddenly, the man awakens, and Tianchen warns Lansha to keep her distance. Lansha quickly flees the store as the man, now a zombie, lunges at Tianchen. However, Tianchen swiftly pins him against the wall, inserting a gun into the man's mouth and ending his existence with a single shot. Tianchen gazes at the meteorite, remarking on his unexpected stroke of luck. Even in his previous life, a piece of meteorite held great value and was inaccessible to the public. He secures the meteorite in his pocket and instructs Lan Sha to refuel their car. As they venture outside to fill the tank, Lan Sha questions the purpose of the meteorite and expresses concern about Tianchen carrying it. Tianchen reveals that the person who taught him the breathing technique was someone fused with a piece of meteorite. Lan Sha is taken aback by this revelation and asks if that man also becomes like the man in the gas station. Tianchen that he didn't, explaining that humans who haven't fused with the meteorite can only undergo three stages of evolution. Only when a human reaches their limit can they harness the power of the meteorite and make it their own. Lan Sha wonders if anyone has fused with the meteorite yet, to which Tianchen responds that it hasn't happened so far. Lan Sha questions how Tianchen managed to learn the breathing technique, and Tianchen reminds her that he previously mentioned coming from the future. Lan Sha finds this explanation plausible. It is revealed that in Tianchen's past life, he was never able to find a piece of meteorite until he died. However, he promises himself that in this life, he will strive to reach the pinnacle. We see Tianchen and Lan Sha return to the garage where Gao Fei is waiting. Upon seeing Lan Sha with Tianchen, Gao Fei jokingly asks if she's Tianchen's girl. Tianchen clarifies that she's not, but Gao Fei continues to tease Tianchen, commenting on his taste in girls and speculating where Tianchen might have kidnapped her from. Tianchen tells Gao Fei to stop with the nonsense, but Lan Sha takes matters into her own hands by stomping on Gao Fei's foot, causing him to scream in pain. Tianchen asks Gao Fei if anyone came while he was away for two days. Gao Fei responds that no one came and it was relatively quiet. Tianchen thinks to himself that perhaps they didn't come after all. Gao Fei tries to inquire about whom Tianchen is referring to, but Tianchen dismisses the topic and introduces Lan Sha as the daughter of his benefactor and Gao Fei as his brother. We see that Lan Sha is still upset with Gao Fei. Gao Fei asks if Tianchen has found the girl he was searching for, and Tianchen admits that the city is in such chaos that he doesn't know how to look for her. Gao Fei asks what their plan should be, and Tianchen informs him that they will return to his hometown in Ji County to check on his parents. However, he advises Gao Fei to mentally prepare for the journey as we see a worried Gao Fei. During the night, Tianchen can be seen practicing the breathing technique. He recalls the last time he stimulated the Abola virus and thinks about how doing so at this stage will accelerate his evolution. He acknowledges the terrible injuries and weakness that come with it but believes that the strengthening of the Abola virus inside his body is the crucial part. However, he also acknowledges the risk of his immune system failing to keep up with the virus, which could lead to infection or immediate transformation into an infected. Tianchen manages to suppress the virus before it reaches stage 3 and reminds himself to use it sparingly. He reflects on the greatest reward he gained from this time period, which is 200 grams of meteorite. He remembers how, in his previous life, only Su Xian had the luck to fuse with a piece weighing about 100 grams. Tianchen notices Gao Fei sleeping peacefully despite the difficult circumstances and decides to lie down and rest as well. As morning arrives, we see Tianchen doing push-ups on the bed while Lan Xia wakes up. He finishes 3,000 push-ups and tells Lan Xia to wake up because they will be leaving soon. They all gather together, and Tianchen prepares to distribute weapons and tools. He informs them that they have five guns and instructs each of them to take one, leaving one as a spare in the car. Gao Fei asks for two guns, but Tianchen explains that he lacks both the strength and the aim to handle two guns effectively. He assures Gao Fei that one gun is sufficient for him at the moment. Tianchen also hands Gao Fei a combat vest. Gao Fei complains about the vest's appearance, but Tianchen emphasizes that what matters is its potential to save his life. Reluctantly, Gao Fei agrees to wear it. Tianchen also provides them with daggers for additional protection. Tianchen takes out a map, and Gao Fei mentions that his house is approximately 900 kilometers away, which would take around 12 hours to reach. However, Tianchen cautions them that if they take the quickest route, they would have to pass through the central area, the largest city. He advises them to go around the city instead. Lan Sha questions why they should avoid the city, 
suggesting that they could find more resources there. Tianchen explains that the infection rate of the meteorite is around 80%, and with a population of 12 million people, the number of zombies inside the city would be staggering. He estimates that there would be 9.6 million zombies, turning the city into hell for humans. Therefore, it is essential to take a detour that would add an additional 1,200 kilometers, including driving up a mountain. Tianchen reassures them that it will be relatively safe. Gao Fei expresses concern about the fuel supply, mentioning that they only have about 100 liters. Tianchen acknowledges the challenge but suggests that they hope to find a usable gas station along the way. If they are unable to find one, they will have to continue on foot, as long as they can survive. Tianchen believes that everything will work out as long as they stay determined. Tianchen devises a plan for them to drive for 8 hours each day and spend the remaining time training. If everything goes smoothly, they should reach Ji County the day after tomorrow. Everyone agrees to the plan, but suddenly Tianchen gets up and informs them that they must do 200 push-ups and 200 squats each before anything else. Gao Fei and Lan Sha scream in horror, but they reluctantly finish their exercises. Exhausted and lying on the ground, they complain about the intensity. Tianchen questions how they can get tired even after using the virus, but Lancha mentions how Tianchen did 1,000 push-ups yesterday and 3,000 push-ups today. Tianchen explains that as they progress, the quality of their bodies will improve, and he tells them to stop whining. He instructs them to get in the car, and they set off toward their destination. Inside the car, Lancha and Gao Fei fall asleep while Tianchen drives. Suddenly, Gao Fei wakes up and offers to drive so that Tianchen can get some rest. Tianchen asks if Gao Fei knows how to drive, and Gao Fei confirms that he does. They switch positions, with Tianchen cautioning Gao Fei to be careful and avoid any dangers. Tianchen then goes to sleep. However, Gao Fei abruptly stops the car, causing Lan Sha to hit her head on the dashboard. They look ahead and see a massive traffic jam. Tianchen urges Gao Fei to quickly drive away, as zombies approach their car. A frightened Gao Fei speeds away, but the zombies continue to chase them. As they near a railing, Gao Fei seeks Tianchen's guidance. Tianchen instructs him to drive through the railing at full speed. Gao Fei accelerates towards the gutter, and their car flies through the air. They successfully land on the other side. Gao Fei remarks that they are safe for now, but the car needs some repairs. Tianchen suggests they spend the night there and instructs them to lock the car once they are finished. He decides they will explore the nearby village. As they prepare, Tianchen senses that something is amiss. When asked about it, Tianchen explains that it is too quiet, and there are no zombies in sight. We see Tianchen pointing his gun towards a man, and as they get a closer look, they realize he is a fellow human. Gao Fei and Lan Sha are relieved, but Tianchen remains cautious and searches the man for any other weapons. The man assures them that he has no bad intentions, but Tianchen sternly tells him to be quiet. Gao Fei insists that the man must be a good guy, and Tianchen questions why he is alone and where the other villagers are. The man explains that some of them died, and the rest left. He adds that he is the only one remaining in the village, emphasizing that there weren't many people, to begin with. Gao Fei suggests staying at the man's place for the night, and the man agrees, mentioning that he hasn't seen many people in days and has been living in constant fear. Lan Sha expresses gratitude for his hospitality, but Tianchen suggests finding another house in the village to avoid inconveniencing the man. However, Lan Sha argues that the man has shown kindness and Tianchen should reciprocate. Gao Fei supports Lan Sha's viewpoint, assuring Tianchen that the man has no ill intentions. Tianchen reluctantly agrees, emphasizing the need for caution. Gao Fei explains to the man that Tianchen is just a bit reserved, and the man welcomes them into his house. During dinner, the man prepares a pot of meat and vegetables, apologizing for the small space. Everyone enjoys the meal, and the man encourages Tianchen to eat, but Tianchen politely declines. The man then brings out two bottles of alcohol. Tianchen contemplates if he still has the chance to reunite with Xian Xian as they begin to drink the alcohol together. After consuming the alcohol, all of them become drunk, and Lan Sha, along with the man, helps Tianchen and Gao Fei to their beds. As they lay the two men down, the man apologizes for the small size of his place and the lack of enough beds. Lan Sha expresses her gratitude and assures him that it won't be a problem. Curious, the man asks Lan Sha why she didn't get drunk despite drinking. She admits that she can't handle alcohol, so she discreetly spits it into another cup. The man, with a sinister expression on his face, walks away and tells Lan Sha to rest, and promises not to disturb them. Lan Sha thanks him, and he responds with a welcome. 
Unbeknownst to Lancha, the man enters a room covered in blood, with pieces of flesh and meat on the table, accompanied by various tools and weapons such as an axe, scissors, and a cleaver. Putting on gloves, he reveals his sinister intentions, expressing his initial plan to kill them while they were unconscious, but Lancha's actions ruined his scheme. He acknowledges Tianchen's strength, noting how the sedative had no effect on him, and mentions someone named you, speculating that she must be hungry by now and that he will bring her food. In the room, Lan Xiao wakes up from her sleep and feels thirsty. She searches for water, but accidentally opens the door to the man's room instead. To her horror, she discovers blood and flesh scattered everywhere. As she opens the fridge, a finger falls out, revealing that the meat is actually human flesh. Lan Xiao is disgusted and believes that the man fed them human meat. Suddenly, the man appears behind her, acknowledging her discovery and confessing that he fed them pork. He admits to being hesitant about letting them go, but now that Lan Xia has witnessed his gruesome work, he no longer feels the need to hesitate. Realizing that she left her gun in her bag, Lan Xia grabs a cleaver from the room to defend herself. The man questions her ability to fight him, but Lan Xia points out that they both have weapons and the outcome is yet to be determined. Although she acknowledges that she is not as skilled as Tian Chen, Lan Xia believes that her connection to Tian Chen's breathing exercise allows her to handle the cleaver. She knows that she needs to outsmart the man. Lan Xia throws the knife at the man, who manages to dodge it, but the distraction gives Lan Xia an opportunity to punch him in the groin. The man screams in pain and falls to the ground. Lan Xia attempts to flee but then remembers that Gao Fei and Tian Chen are still unconscious. She realizes that she needs to lure the man away from them. As the man gets up and approaches Lan Xia, she provokes him with insults, making him angry and prompting him to chase after her. Lan Xia decides to run towards the basement when she notices that the man hasn't caught up to her. Once in the basement, she comes face to face with a zombie who has been tied to a chair. Terrified by the zombie, Lan Xia stumbles and falls to the ground noticing her hand touching a severed hand which scares her even more. As she tries to regain her composure, she notices the man approaching her in the basement. Lan Xia quickly hides behind a pillar in the room, observing the man as he addresses the zombie, referring to her as you and apologizing for locking her in the basement. He reassures you that he will keep her company. The man sees the severed hand, and he realizes that someone else is present in the room. He calls out to Lan Xia, urging her to come out. However, Lan Xia, still filled with disgust and anger, boldly tells him that he is sick for keeping a zombie. The man becomes angry and defends himself, proclaiming that the zombie is his wife. He questions whether it is wrong for a husband to take care of his wife, emphasizing that she will forever be his beloved, regardless of the circumstances. Lan Xia, trying to reason with the man, tells him to wake up and accept the reality that his wife is no longer alive. But the man refuses to acknowledge her death, asserting that she can still move and eat. Determined to feed his wife, the man begins to walk towards Lan Xia, with the intention of using her as a food source for his undead spouse. Lan Xia, in a desperate attempt to defend herself, throws her shoe at the man, but he skillfully evades the attack. He grabs hold of her leg and threatens to cut it off, intending to feed her to his undead wife. Just as he swings his cleaver, Tian Chen arrives with a gun and shoots, but his aim is affected by the lingering effects of the alcohol, causing him to miss. The man seizes the opportunity and places the cleaver around Lan Xia's neck, demanding that Tian Chen lower his weapon. Observing that Tian Chen entered through a basement window, the man insists that Tian Chen surrender, using Lan Xia as leverage. Unfazed, Tian Chen directs his gun toward the head of the man's wife, instilling fear in the man as he begs Tian Chen to not shoot his wife. He implores Tian Chen to put his gun down. In response, Tian Chen insists that the man release Lan Xia or he will shoot the zombie. Reluctantly, the man agrees to exchange hostages. As they switch positions, the zombie manages to break free from her restraints. Taking advantage of the chaos, Lan Xia bites the man's arm, causing him to release her. Meanwhile, Tian Chen swiftly points his gun at the zombie, preparing to eliminate the threat. In a surprising turn of events, the man jumps in front of the bullet, sacrificing himself to save the zombie. He collapses to the ground, bleeding profusely. In his final moments, the man reminisces about a past memory, recalling how he promised to care for his wife until her last breath and how they would always be together. However, in the present reality, his wife, now turned into a zombie, bites his neck. Tian Chen swiftly eliminates the zombie, assuring Lan Xia that corpses cannot feel pain and that she shouldn't dwell on it. Together, Tian Chen and Lan Xia make their way back upstairs. Lan Xia expresses her sorrow, 
questioning why the world has become such a bleak place, reflecting on how the man could have had a loving family if not for the apocalypse. Tianchen responds, acknowledging that in a world without the apocalypse, they too could have led ordinary lives, studying in school. However, he urges Lansha to accept the harsh reality of their current situation and emphasizes the singular truth that remains in this world, they must do everything in their power to survive. We see Gao Fei and Lansha working together to repair the car, while Tianchen stands nearby, keeping a watchful eye on them. Gao Fei requests a wrench from Lansha, but as she hands it over, Gao Fei accidentally catches a glimpse of her skirt. In response, Lansha swiftly strikes Gao Fei in the face with the wrench, igniting a small scuffle between the two. Tianchen observes their antics and ponders that there has been little progress since he reached stage 1. He concludes that things have been too safe for him to further advance. Surprisingly, Gao Fei successfully fixes the car, which impresses Tianchen. Gao Fei proudly states that he can handle the task when given the proper tools. Tianchen reminds them that they need to get going since they wasted a considerable amount of time the previous day. Gao Fei, hoping for some praise for his work, eagerly awaits Tianchen's recognition. Tianchen spots a gas station ahead, crowded with numerous zombies. Gao Fei suggests finding an alternative location, but Tianchen dismisses the idea with a mischievous smile. Suspicious of Tianchen's gaze, Gao Fei questions him. In response, Tianchen reveals his grand plan. He hands Gao Fei two knives, much to Gao Fei's disbelief. Gao Fei asks if Tianchen is serious about the proposition, but Tianchen affirms that if Gao Fei wants to evolve faster, he must face challenging battles. Lan Sha encourages Gao Fei to toughen up, reminding him that he is a man. Tianchen then hands Lan Sha a gun, informing her that she too will be fighting the zombies. Tianchen assures them that the number of zombies is insignificant, but Lan Sha disagrees, stating that those are not just a few zombies. Tianchen asserts that those zombies are merely small fries and that he was able to handle them even before his evolution. He emphasizes the importance of survival and shoots into the sky, capturing the attention of all the nearby zombies. In a house nearby, a zombie is undergoing a grotesque evolution, with spikes protruding from its back. Meanwhile, at the gas station, Gao Fei and Lan Sha fiercely battle the incoming zombies. The relentless onslaught of the zombies forces Gao Fei into a defensive position, struggling to fend them off. Just as the situation seems dire, a well-placed bullet from Tianchen eliminates the threat, saving Gao Fei from being overwhelmed. Perched on the roof, Tianchen instructs Gao Fei and Lan Sha not to pay attention to him but to focus on their fighting technique. He emphasizes the importance of maintaining composure during combat. With determination, they continue to fight through the horde of zombies, demonstrating their newfound skills. Finally, they emerge victorious, having defeated all the zombies in their path. However, before they can catch their breath, Tianchen commands them to practice the breathing exercise he previously taught them. Gao Fei and Lan Sha express their discontent, deeming Tianchen's methods as sick and inhumane. Undeterred, Tianchen responds by stating that it appears he needs to intensify their training. Regardless of their objections, he urges them to proceed with the breathing exercise. Tianchen gazes at Lan Sha and notices the emergence of unique patterns on her body, similar to those on Uncle Luo, indicating that she possesses the speed type ability. Curiosity peaked, Tianchen awaits Gao Fei's progress, as he hasn't observed his development yet. Suddenly, a sense of anticipation leads Tianchen's gaze toward a nearby house, compelling him to investigate further. Intrigued by the unknown, he ventures toward the house, eager to uncover its secrets. As Tianchen approaches the house, a strong stench of blood fills his nostrils, prompting him to cautiously enter. Inside, he is greeted by a gruesome sight of lifeless bodies. However, before he can comprehend the scene fully, he is abruptly attacked by an unknown force, sending him hurtling out of the house. Recovering from the impact, Tianchen finds himself face to face with a formidable monster. Recognizing it as a lone walker, known for its solitary nature and formidable abilities, Tianchen understands that defeating it won't be an easy task. The creature launches a swift assault, but Tianchen deftly evades its attacks, leaping into the air and using a nearby tree to propel himself toward the monster. With a swift strike of his knives, he manages to sever its spikes, temporarily weakening the creature. However, the lone walker doesn't relent, delivering a powerful blow to Tianchen's abdomen, shattering his knives and sending him sprawling a considerable distance away. As the creature approaches, Tianchen realizes the immense challenge before him, doubting his ability to overcome it. But just as the lone walker prepares to strike, a gunshot rings out, originating from Gao Fei standing in the distance. 
The unexpected shot shocks both Tianchen and Gao Fei, who had taken the initiative to intervene, providing Tianchen with a momentary respite from the impending danger. Gao Fei, displaying quick thinking and marksmanship, advises Tianchen to dodge as he unleashes a barrage of bullets, striking the zombie in the head multiple times. This unexpected display of accuracy surprises Tianchen, who then instructs Gao Fei to aim for the monster's temple, its weak point. Gao Fei, seeking assistance in finding an opening, receives help from Tianchen, who throws a rock to divert the creature's attention. Seizing the opportunity, the monster turns its focus towards Tianchen, lunging at him. However, Tianchen skillfully evades the attack with a well-timed jump, although the monster manages to grab hold of his leg. Despite Tianchen's attempts to kick the monster, it effortlessly dodges the attack, retaliating by tossing Tianchen around. Sensing the urgency, Tianchen urges Gao Fei to strike swiftly. Recognizing an opening, Gao Fei takes aim and fires at the monster, hitting its weak spot with two precise shots. Amazed by his newfound marksmanship skills, Gao Fei's confidence soars. As a result of Gao Fei's accurate shots, the Lone Walker relinquishes its grip on Tianchen. However, the creature still remains active. In response, Tianchen seizes the opportunity to deliver a decisive blow. He grips the monster by its head, tearing both its skull and spine simultaneously. Witnessing Gao Fei's remarkable skills, Tianchen inquires if he was successful. Gao Fei points Tianchen's attention toward a leaf in front of him, demonstrating his accuracy and precision by skillfully striking it with a rock. What lies ahead for them as they venture into this mystical world? What do you think will happen next? Don't forget to hit the like button, comment if you want to continue this series and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.